Hello and welcome to the Mercury Vapor Glow channel. The viewers of my channel will already know these two lovely fixtures from Philips. The SGS201 and the SRP here. You can find videos on these two fixtures on my channel. I have made them before. They are already available and why am I showing these fixtures here today again? Well, I'd like to present to you uh, LED replacement bulbs for these fixtures. One of them is particularly interesting because as you may remember this is a high pressure sodium fixture that still has the whole gear inside it and also the high voltage starter for the bulb. I can prove to you that I'm correct. Here is the startup with the correct bulb that the light has been meant for. It's a sodium bulb and soon it will become yellow. I will exchange these bulbs for LEDs today and this is without even touching the ballast. Here you can see it becomes yellow so this is this is a high pressure sodium fixture. And the bulbs that I want to show to you today are two Osram products that uh, I can show you here. There are two of them. One of them is the Osram LED 2000 lumen HID replacement. This is uh, meant for working with the conventional control gear, as stated here, it's not dimmable, of course. And uh, it has parameters to replace, let's say, a 50 watt mercury vapor bulb. Not much more than that, because 3800 lumens or 3600 lumens, it's where a fresh 80 watt mercury lamp would start its life before it gets dimmer and dimmer with service life of course so you could replace 80 watts with that but it would be dimmer at the beginning and this of course you could you cannot use in a high pressure sodium fixture because the high voltage of the starter will kill it but here we have the one that is even more interesting so this one is a high pressure sodium replacement so as you can see it has the leds where the arc tube would be in a high uh, pressure sodium tubular bulb it has the e40 socket and the thing that's very interesting about it is it has uh, over 10,000 lumens with 65 watts and also very interesting with this bulb is that this is meant for being used with conventional control gear and the igniter and this bulb cannot be used without the control gear is extremely interesting so you can disattach the igniter of course deactivate it if you want but the conventional control gear has to stay in the fixture this lamp cannot work on voltages upwards of 110 volts as it says here so the other bulb that i showed you before you can just use with mains voltage doesn't matter but this bulb it matters a lot so i i'd like to present to you this uh, two very special bulbs here. And what I didn't mention, the other fixture is a mercury vapor fixture, of course, that I have chosen for this demonstration. Right, two bulbs, two fixtures. Let's take the bulbs out and start. So before we screw these bulbs into the fixture, let's maybe examine them with a while taken out of their boxes. And it's of course, uh, heavy duty LED bulbs, it's not comparable to anything that you would get uh, at uh, your um, store that sells uh, uh, like home grade stuff. These are professional bulbs, they are very heavy. This 80 watt bulb here, it has um, a structure that mimics the light output of a standard globe bulb, so it has LEDs on top and LEDs all around it. These can generate the 2000 lumens with the uh, 20 watts or sorry 16 watts of power only, but still 
there is a very heavy heat sink so i think that these may even last or 50% of them better said may last the 50,000 hours that's declared because this this is how this norm is declared that 50% of the bulbs surpass 50,000 hours right so this this should like serve for a really long time and I guess that it it should because it's so heavily heat heat sinked here the LEDs should not burn out very quickly and like for comparison the household bulbs are declared like the filament style bulbs with 10 to 15,000 hours maybe 50% uh, survival and the uh, other style LEDs with a little more heatsink are declared for like 20 to up to 25,000 hours and but of course many of them don't live up to that because it's only this 50% failure rate and now let's come back to the other this is very very interesting bulb so these are really really expensive if you want to buy them new and I bought it on an eBay auction for a little less I wouldn't buy it else but uh, I was just too curious to pass it up for that price like about 15 US dollars it's it's okay so here it has the heatsink at the very top this heatsink is not as heavy surprisingly as the other one so the bulb is itself is of course heavier than the other bulb because it's bigger but this heatsink is pretty thin it has a core that distribu distributes the heat and then has like a cap that says Osram on it and the LEDs here that's 65 watts of declared LED power that's really really a lot so there are the LED arrays here placed where the arc tube would be circa in a 150 watt high pressure sodium bulb because this is a high pressure sodium replacement here as I have already said and here the E40 socket for the standard it's the standard for the high pressure sodium bulb and this this is only a high pressure sodium replacement and i guess this is not meant for any type of home use or anything because it cannot run without the control gear maybe we we can have a look there is a few things that are said here but it's not much more than it says on the packaging itself right okay let's screw them in start them up and see how they work how they replace the original discharge bulbs so we have fitted the first bulb here and i must say this is a 250 watt high pressure sodium fixture and it's only a 150 watt replacement i don't have a 150 watt high pressure sodium light at hand and also this fixture is meant for the uh, globe shaped bulbs here is the correct bulb for it the uh, uh, high pressure sodium 250 watt uh, bulb shaped bulb and this is a replacement for tubular bulbs so this is not entirely optimal but we can still try to start it up in the instructions it doesn't say specifically that it has to be the control gear for the exact lamp type so I have tried this before it didn't burn up I hope this time it also won't burn up so <laughs> let's start it up and see how it works it instantly starts with the full brightness so and the basement is lit up really really well here it may not be as bright as the 250 watt high pressure sodium bulb of course because it's a 150 watt replacement you can see the the control gear is humming a lot more so the control gear seems not to be very happy with this bulb and I don't know if I have to attribute it to it to be the wrong control gear because of the wattage difference or if this does matter or if it doesn't it doesn't sound like the starter is working all the time because this bulb is uh, voltage protected up to 4000 volts because it can be as I said used with the igniter overall it seems to work like the light distribution here from the side is the biggest it's the standard for this fixture it's like this fixture is described in the manufacturer's description it's it seems to work correctly 
just that the beam is more downward than with the globular bulb. And that's it. It works. It works fine. It's really bright. So if you turn it off, you can see the LEDs glow for a very short moment. But it's, I mean, it doesn't seem to get overly hot, to be honest. I didn't see it get too hot. So let's uh, switch to the other light fixture and try the other replacement bulb. Okay, so we have put in the correct bulb in this fixture and now we have outfitted this Mercury Vapor Philips SGS201 fixture with the LED replacement as you can see inside and we will just try it out and see how it works. I don't expect it to be very overly bright because it's the 16 watt version. Let's see. So of course with LED the boring instant start, right? And yes, it is not overly bright. So it's, it is bright, but it's not very bright. And on the street, I think it would be a little too less on a high mast at least. And maybe in a park on a like three meter, like a nine foot pole or something, it would be okay. But I mean, the light distribution is still kind of okay, but it's more uneven. And you can see here on the wall that you have these stripes here. So the light distribution with this fixture is not optimal. Maybe if it would have a bowl with a diffractor or something, it would be better. But so this is, of course, not the very best replacement for the optics. And it works. It has. It still has a flicker, as you can see on the camera. I don't see it in person. I mean, overall, these uh, LED fixtures are very, uh, like these LED replacements are very, very good idea because if someone has to trash the old fixture and get a new LED fixture or just get a new bulb and he decides to get the bulb and this bulb does what it's supposed to do, consumes less energy, then it's better for us lighting enthusiasts because we have our classic fixtures for longer, right? But of course, it doesn't have the soul and the vibe that the old discharge lamps had to it. So overall, I'd say we'll end this experiment here. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you liked it, please subscribe for more street lighting content. I will update my channel here soon a little bit more. And thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.